Hi, my name is Gerdy Verboert and you're listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. Today's guest describes herself as a Haribo addict in remission. She was born and raised in Belgium and after finishing high school she moved to Israel to study at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem where she received an MBA in Computer and Information Systems and Organizational Behavior. Once she had her degree, she embarked on a career in IT, holding different management positions in several international IT companies. Along the way, she moved to the UK, where she settled down in London. Without consciously noticing it though, my guest was growing overworked, overweight and unhappy. Despite her success in the corporate world, her confidence and self-esteem were low. In an effort to at least control her weight and manage her health, she tried lots of different diets, pills and potions, while fitting in exercise whenever and wherever she could. None of it with any lasting results. Thinking the lack of results must be due to a lack of willpower, motivation and time, and maybe just not being able to make it happen, she turned to others for help, none of whom was able to help her with a long-term solution. She even went so far as to become a personal trainer and nutritional therapist, but found that though what she learned was helpful, it didn't provide a sustainable long-term solution either. That's when she started developing her own five-step system that worked and, more importantly, was sustainable for the long term. Ditching the old formula of eat less and move more, my guest focused on the five steps of mindset, habits and behavior, nutrition and diet, exercise and movement, and sleep and stress. When she's not working, my guest loves to cook and bake, spend time outdoors and with family, play golf, swim and raise money for charity. Unusual for a personal trainer, she hates running, so just know you are not alone when you don't enjoy pounding the pavement. Let's dive into my conversation with Anne Yarchi. And welcome to the podcast. Thank you um, for having me. I always like to dive uh, in immediately. And as you know, the podcast is called Daring Self-Leadership and a Nature Connection. How can a connection with nature help our soul, help us connect with our inner self-leader? Um, to me the connection with nature is massively important. Um, just being outdoors, there's so mm. much good for us that um, it, it's it's something that everyone should do every day, even if it's just five minutes. Mm-hmm. As a leader, many of us are really, really busy. Yeah. But just being outdoors has so many benefits uh, from a health perspective, which is for me something really, really important. Mm-hmm. Um, from a happiness perspective, but also that connection to nature is, is grounding us. So, uh, personally, I, I get the most inspiration when I'm out and about in nature. Mm-hmm. So, um, it helps when it comes to work, leadership and everything else. It re-energizes you. There's just so, so much benefit from being outdoors and in mm-hmm. nature. Um, it's known that being outdoors regulates your sleep, so you get better sleep as well. There's just so many benefits that mm. people who are stuck indoors all day long, they're just missing out on a massively important part of being a, being a leader, being the best you can be. Mm. Yeah, I I would agree. Um, at the same time, when you're stuck indoors, it's very easy to uh, forget that there's an outdoors and that it perhaps could be important to, you know, for all the things that you just mentioned, to actually spend some time there. Um, is that an ex- something that you experienced yourself at some point in your life? Oh, 100%. Um, so especially during the week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I used to work in the corporate world before and I used to travel a lot. I used to be on planes or in the car, uh, client meetings and, mm-hmm. and, and during the week I had very little time to be outdoors or, or I didn't take the time to be outdoors. Mm. Let's, yeah. let's put it that way. Mm. Um, while at weekends, I spend most of my weekends, I used to spend outdoors on the golf course. So, mm. um, I probably, time-wise, I probably had the right amount of 
time outdoors, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was condensed in uh, at the weekend as opposed mm. to uh, being spread out throughout the week. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing about golf courses, of course, is uh, playing golf takes quite a bit of time. You know, yes. uh, the average round is, you know, you, you very quickly spend something like four hours there. Mm-hmm. And they, they are almost always in beautiful surroundings. So, yes. you know, well maintained, uh, with more well, wildlife than people may think there, um, there is, because it's, a, it's a quiet space as well. So it's a, a space where wildlife often feels yeah. quite safe. Is there a, um, was there an impetus for you to start changing that? Because you said, you know, you traveled quite a bit. You you had little time or you made little time to spend time outdoors during the week. What ch- what changed? Because I know you now um, do much more. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I burned out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I changed careers, so that those two things made made a big difference. So mm. I struggled combining a healthy lifestyle with uh, whatever I was doing in the past, mm. and uh, I decided that because I couldn't find that right balance, I decided that I was going to look for that right balance, mm-hmm. and at the same time help others to find the balance while doing what they were they are doing. So. Um, so, so yeah, I had, it was a lot of trial and error to find mm-hmm. the right balance, mm-hmm. but, uh, the career change is the, the, the big, uh, drive to, to have changed that balance for me. Mm. Is that, is that something that you think everyone should, should do, or is that almost always necessary to somehow, um, restore your physical and mental health almost i I think everyone obviously not everyone needs to do a career change but Mm. everyone needs to um find more time to put themselves higher up on the priority list 100 Mm -hmm. percent um i think we live massively busy lives um we we put ourselves last and i i I have the impression at least, but I think research shows it as well, that women even worse than men. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and at some point it, it eats us from, from the inside. Yeah. And we realize that, you know, we, we can't deal with it anymore. I mean, for, there's two expressions that I, you know, demonstrated quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And one is you can't pour from an empty jug. Yeah. And secondly, when you're on an airplane, they always tell you to put your oxygen mask first because mm. otherwise you can't help anyone else. Yeah. Even if you're there with little children, if you're mm-hmm. not alive, you can't do anything else. So mm. those are the two main examples that I find uh, are really demonstrating how important it is to find that balance for you. Mm. Yeah. And does... Um... Because oftentimes when we think of balance, the word balance, and we look at a scale, for example, one of those old fashioned ones where there's two plateaus on each side of them. The only way you achieve balance on those scales is when you put an equal amount of weight on each of the scales. When it comes to life balance or life work balance, as um, we've, you know, as it is often talked about, when using the word balance, we tend to think yeah. that life and work, and I'm, I, I, I'm using hand signals here and nobody's going to be able to see it. But anyways, <laughs> we tend to think that life and work needs to be equally distributed. And yeah. you are shaking your head, which. Uh, I am. Yes. Yeah. So no, it, I don't think it will ever be, uh, uh, evenly distributed. It will, even if it's just those five minutes that gives you that feeling you've done something for yourself, mm. that to me is enough to to feel that that there is some kind of balance. Mm. Um, and yes, it will never be a fifty fifty percent. I mean, for some it might be, mm. but for most people, the reality is that it isn't. 
But there's a difference between zero and hundred when it comes to life at zero and, uh, you know, yourself at zero and, and, and life at, um, and or work or family or whatever it is at a hundred. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, 80, 20, 95, five. There mm. will be times where you can put yourself first a little bit more mm. and other times a little bit less. But those five minutes, even if it's just five minutes, are mega important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what I think a lot of people, uh, we can call it self care because that's basically what it is. And self care yeah. when you, you know, when you browse the magazines. And I don't, uh, God, it's been a long time since I read a lot of magazines, but when I read the headlines, it's um, somehow it seems to me more a feminine subject than it is a male subject um and self-care in those magazines often seems to be uh well you take yourself to a spa and you get a massage and you you know the bubble bath and perhaps a bottle of wine and so those things whereas self-care can be so much more is so much more i think it definitely is so much more i mean to me self-care is yes it's great to have those massage and bubble baths absolutely yeah. One, you have to have the time for it. Second, you have to have the money for it. Um, but self care can just be sitting out in the sunshine for five minutes, mm. um, making sure you hydrate enough, uh, you eat healthily. Yeah. So there's lots of other things, uh, making sure you go to bed on time and you mm-hmm. sleep enough. There are lots of other bits that are part of self care that is yeah. not just, you know, having a bubble bath or, yeah, or yeah, going yeah. for a massage. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. So how does self care connect with self leadership? I, I think if you feel good within yourself and you are feeling fulfilled within yourself, mm-hmm. you can be a way better leader being, you know, healthy inside allows you to be a much better person for Mm -hmm. anything and everything around you, be it work, be it the leader, be it uh, in relationships, be it whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you're happy and confident within yourself and you take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. the ripple effect is massive. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, when I read the, or I I read or recorded the introduction and I, of course, put this, uh, put it out before, uh, at the start of this episode, and um, you described to me how, while still in corporate, outwardly outwardly successful, and at the same time deeply unhappy, overweight, overstressed, and all these other things. So how how did you manage to move from that space? Into the space where you are now as a co- as a <clears throat> somebody who helps others go through a process that you yourself went through. So for me, it took a career change, mm. which again, you know, that that's kind of I, I couldn't find someone that helped me uh, find a balance that was right for me. So. Just out of curiosity, who did you turn to? Um, I spoke to personal trainers at the gym. Mm-hmm. I spoke to GPs. I spoke to um, certain people who, you know, mentioned they were health coaches. Mm-hmm. Those are the kind of people that I, I turned to. At the time, I wasn't so much into life coaching. I think at the time as well, life coaching was not a big thing mm-hmm. as such. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's only the last 10 years or so that it became more popular. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it was interesting because I didn't realize it was so much related to life. Mm. For me, it was how can I be healthy while being busy? Yeah. I, I hadn't realized how much it actually affected everything else mm. as part of life. And it's only when I made that switch for me mm-hmm. that I realized what effect it had on everything else. Yeah. There's a, I went through a similar journey. I used to be, um, you know, 
successful at what I was doing, but I was also unhealthy, overweight, and all those kind of, you know, stressed out. Um, and you can, I didn't realize I was, you know, that journey into overweight was heavily linked to the fact that I was unhappy in what it was that I was doing. And I was just, you know, I'm an, emo- it turns out I'm an emotional eater. So, you know, my unhappiness was battled and my stress was battled by just eating and unfortunately not uh, the most healthy foods. Cause if I had that, if I had done that, um, I might not have gone, you know, t- to up to a weight that was over a hundred kilos at some point. And it's very easy, I think, to neglect or not be, it's not even neglect, but it is to become unaware of the fact that you are neglecting yourself. Yeah, that is definitely true. Yeah. It's one of those things where you get, you get used to it. It's part of, who you are and mm. unless you know you have a wake up call which is whatever it is for different people it's different things yeah um it's hard to get aware be aware of of what's going on 100 mm. percent. i i do agree with that yeah um i didn't even realize so i know in the introduction you mentioned that i'm a harry bird addict in in remission yeah. mm. um I, I had no idea what effect it actually had on my digestive system, on my sleep, on the headaches that I had every day, mm-hmm. let alone the weight that I, I put on. But all yeah. these other things that help me feel more invigorated on a daily basis, which then helps me be a better person, a better leader, a better everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and especially with, you know... um I've never gone into Haribo, although as a ski instructor, I carry Haribo around because it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, um, it can be a great motivator to get kids to do what it is, whatever it is that they need to be doing. Um, but at the same time, I knew every McDonald's and Burger King along the highways in the Netherlands that I used to travel to get from one client to the next. And I knew them intimately, you know, it's not just that I passed them by. I actually stopped there and bought myself whatever yeah. lunch I was I going to get. I'm the same because I knew exactly where the pick and mix, um, uh, you know, things mm-hmm. were in mm-hmm. the different petrol station or yeah. a- along, along the way. But yeah. Yeah. On the M1, I knew them all. Yeah. 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 And, and when I eat and I, well, I haven't eaten at those places for years now, but the last time I did, I was like, what in God's name was I thinking? Because this doesn't taste like anything that I want to eat. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I yeah. agree. Actually, I had a McDonald's. Uh, I think it was last year, um, and n- not because it was my choice, but it was the only thing that was around, and I got stuck. And I'm just like, that meat is not meat. No, and the bun is not. That's not bread. Forget no, the it's... bun. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was no. Anyways, so when um, we started out talking about nature, and for me, when um, I realized I had completely disconnected from nature for a long time, because, you know, again, I would, like you, I was very busy or I kept myself busy and working all the time and, and not really making time to take myself outside. Even though, like you, I played golf, so every now and again I would. Um, but it's when I started making time and actually spending time in nature that for me, it felt like coming home, especially when I'm, I spend time uh, in the mountains and it's actually the reason that I moved there because I feel deeply connected to them. It's it, my whole body tells me that I'm doing something that I'm supposed to be doing. How does that come back? How does that work for you? When do you know, feel yourself deeply connected to that part? So obviously I live in a city. So being in the mountains, uh, mm. you know, is not, is not the thing that I can do on a regular basis, but you it's... can still go to the local park around the corner mm. or just in your garden if you've got one. 
yep. um, and just reconnect to nature in that way. Mm. Uh, I love spring and autumn because yeah. you see nature coming up mm-hmm. um, or, or nature changing and going away for the winter, yeah. whichever way. You know, it's, it's, for me, it's the colors, the flowers, the greenery, the, the silence as well, mm-hmm. um, the wildlife, be it birds, be it squirrels, be it whatever, foxes here in London. You have foxes in the local gardens. Um, yeah. all these things to me are enough. They, you know, put me in mountains. I do agree. Yeah. Uh, put me on a beach watching the sunset or the sunrise. Mm-hmm. Definitely more exciting than, you know, the local park around the corner. But it is what it is. You yeah. can do that when you have more time. Uh, while when you don't have the time, you can just do the little things that you can do. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's, uh, you know, I, especially during this pandemic, I have, um, really appreciated the privilege that I have because I have mountains literally at my doorstep, but I, you know, I, I lived in a very urban environment for a very long time. Um, and when you have a garden, like you mentioned, that's great because there's, uh, you know, there's lots of things to be discovered there, even wildlife. If you, if you. Yeah. You know, you you just have to be willing to see it, yeah. and you have to learn to see it as well. And there's an amazing amount of wildlife in uh, in cities as well. You know, there's kites and and all kinds of you know birds that nestle there that have learned mm-hmm. to live among high rises. And like you mentioned, foxes and uh, badgers and all those kinds of animals they live in the parks as well. You may not yeah. see them every time, but if you look for them, especially in the winter time when there's a little bit of snow. You can very easily find the, the tracks. Yeah. There. You, you do. Yeah. You do. It's really about opening your eyes and, and do what you can. Yeah. And that makes a difference. Exactly. It's, it's, you know, even when there's no park in, and you live in an apartment building and you have maybe a balcony with a couple of flower pots, you know, standing at a window and looking at the sky is also I, connecting with nature. Yeah. I mean, I'm not an early riser as such, so mm-hmm. in the summer I might not catch the sunset, the sunrise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but just watching that is yeah. is is incredible. The sunset, I just love. I actually am a lover of sunsets and sunrises. Uh, sunsets more than rises, only mm-hmm. because you know timing of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah, it's it's just beautiful. It is. It is, and it's. Um... A great way of reminding ourselves that, um, you know, whatever problem we ran into today, it is, it probably isn't going to be the end of the world. And also that we're part of something bigger than just us and, and our little bubble of, of thoughts and issues and, and everything else. Yeah. I mean, to me, one, one of the things that I love is I challenge myself once a year with a big challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen this year because obviously, uh, restrictions and see what mm-hmm. happens. But, you know, climbing a mountain or going for a long walk, a, a ultra marathon walk or something mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. it just puts you in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Where you realize that you are just a small something in something much bigger. Yeah. And, yeah. But at the same time, it, it fills you up with the wow factor that gives you that energy to do something big yourself as well. Mm. Yeah. And there's lessons in there as well. Uh, cause, oh, um, it. when, you know, I've taken people into the mountains who are like, I'm never going to get to that summit that you think you're taking me to. And when they do, they find out that they are capable of way more than they thought they were capable of. Yeah. And it doesn't 100%. have to be a mountain. It might, it may be one of those, um, those, those marathon walks. You know, you don't have to run a marathon. You can just walk on a, a very long distance, for example. I, I walked with a client. She did her five, first 5k walk and she mm. never thought she would do that. So, yeah. you know, which for her was a massive achievement. She had exactly. never walked an hour. Mm. By herself. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it doesn't have to be big and dramatic to still be life changing for people. 
Yeah. Because, you know, we, and that's the same with nature. People, uh, when people, or when I talk about nature, it's very easy for me to talk about the great outdoors simply because I almost live in them. But nature can be that little uh, caterpillar crossing the road and you're thinking, oh my God, if you don't hurry up, you're going oh. to be crushed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a car coming, hurry. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the big outdoors. You know, there's nature everywhere, but you have to be willing to see it. It is. I mean, I'm always fascinated by uh, uh, spiders and spider webs, mm. you know, which you see in the hedge or you see yeah. uh, on, on your windowsill and, and yeah. stuff like that. It's just incredible. Yeah. But yeah. And that's the, that's the nice part when, uh, because it, when you, I could almost see the, the, the awe and the wonder that you had as a kid that you still have when you look at a, at a spider web. And that's, I love that kind of thing, you know, just allowing ourselves to give, to let the kid come out again. And because that is part of leadership as well, being able to be in awe of things and to wonder and to ask and to, you know, how kids, kids can ask, how do, how does a spider make its web? And when you start to think of it, how does, how does it start its web? Yeah. You know, and just once it has started, I can get why it can make all these nice shapes, mm-hmm. but it has to start. And how does, how do they do that? So that's a question for the listeners. They can now start figuring it out. <laughs> so, um, I asked my, all my guests three questions before I come to the final one. And, and the, the first one of these questions is, um, what is a favorite book of yours that celebrates nature? Uh, for me, it is The Alchemist by mm-hmm. uh, Polo Collio. And mm-hmm. it, 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 it's one of those books that, uh, for me, probably started a little bit of the pers- personal development mm-hmm. uh, route. But because it's done in the desert and in, you know, the outdoors and things like that, it, to me, that, yeah, that connects me to, to somehow nature. Yeah. yeah and to right. something bigger than you and dreaming and, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely does. A favorite piece of music or song that celebrates nature? Um, Growing up, it must have been the 80s, I think, uh, there was um, a French guy, Jean-Michel Jarre, who did the Grey yeah. Blue, the, the uh, Big Blue or uh, Le Grand mm-hmm. Bleu, it was called, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, which was all, uh, I think it's also music of a, of, of, of a movie. Yeah, I think it's a soundtrack. Um, mm. And that, to me, although it is uh, very, uh, what do you call it, um, it's not like instruments and stuff. It's mm-hmm. uh, one electronics. of the electronic music tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got this vibration that makes mm. you feel somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. I think it was a movie because the Jean-Michel Jarre was a composer as well, if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah. Um, and the final one, um, a movie that celebrates nature. So I had to think about that one. Um, there were, there's two, mm-hmm. I think. One is, um, the, uh, Blue Planet from Africa, yeah. mm-hmm. which is incredible. And I love watching it. One of my nieces is fascinated by it. So we yeah. watch it together when we can. Mm-hmm. And the second one is March of the Penguins. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which again, you know, Again, the vastness and obviously the whole nature thing of, of how they, they, they mate and, and yeah. how much they walk and stuff, but incredible. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful movies. I, I, yeah, I'm good. I don't remember seeing, um, the Attenborough movie, but I get what you're saying because I love watching nature documentaries. And the so March they, of the Pe- yeah. underwater episodes. Uh, yeah. you can watch them on, on, uh, on YouTube actually. Mm. Okay. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. The planet is incredible, isn't it? Nature is incredible. So, final question. What is one thing 
and we've talked about quite a few things already, but what is one thing that uh, the listeners can do to step onto that path of self-leadership and perhaps also connect themselves with nature a little bit more that will support them as they go down that path? Make a point every day. Look at your diary. When can you fit in five minutes outdoors or more, Mm. obviously? Mm -hmm. But make a point to schedule it in your diary like you schedule anything else. Yeah. Ideally during the daytime, mm-hmm. but if you can't, at least at night as well, where you, you get to see lots of different things anyway. So, yeah. 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 And it's um and when you go out at night, uh, my tip would be if I may, um look up every now and again. Oh my God, e- the sky, the sky. <laughs> yeah. This, In- and that was one of those things that was, I found incredible. I, I climbed Kilimanjaro a few years mm-hmm. ago and looking up at the sky was just incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah, God. but even in the big city uh, like London, um, you know, when you go into your garden or, you know, when a park is safe enough to go into right. at the dark, you know, try to move away a little bit from where the street lights are. And if it's a really nice day, I used to do that when I went to my, would take my dog for a walk late at night and there was a park near me and I would just stand in the middle of the park, you know, in one of those grass, grassy knolls or something. And then just put my, you know, lean back and look up at, at the sky. Yeah. Yeah, and you I, may not I, see as many stars as you do on the Kilimanjaro, but you still see quite a few. You see loads, and my dream is still to go into into space. So <laughs> I don't know if that ever's going to come true, <laughs> but hey. going into space is definitely something that I that's on my wish list. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. I don't I don't have the desire myself, but I can to, to, I get it because it must be wonderful to be up there and look at whatever it is that is out there. Oh. Yeah. And thank you so much for spending time with me. No, it was great, great to chat with you. You've been listening to Daring Self Leadership and the Nature Connection. You can find the show notes for this episode and every other one on the podcast page on the Dare Greatly Coaching website. The podcast is available wherever you like to listen and it's hosted by me, Gerdy Verwoerd. The music is Butt Bursting by Poddington Bear. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you'll join me again for the next episode. And in the meantime, as always, go Dare Greatly.